Hi everyone, my name is Mandeep and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, in today's video, we are going to discuss about risk regression. Uh, in our previous video, we discussed uh, risk regression and lasso regression, the conceptual part. Uh, we understood the mathematical concepts behind them, how they work and why they are required and in what scenario they are helpful. So. In uh, uh, risk regression uh, with Python code example, uh, I'm going to create a model. And uh, so let's get started without any further delay. Uh, so before starting, uh, I'm going to take a look uh, on the data frame or data set that we are going to use for this particular example. So here is the uh, that data set. This data set is the data set of a particular big mart or any, uh, sh any you know, uh, uh, shopping mart from where like uh, user buys different type of household stuff. So every column has like item identifier. Uh, there are certain columns which basically categorizes uh, the attributes of a particular item. So item identifier is like uh, what uh, a particular code for that particular item. What is the weight? Item fat represents the how uh, how much uh, uh, this particular item contains the fat. Item visibility gives uh, the kind of you know uh, how visible that item is. Type of item, item MRP, outload outlet identifier. I mean there are multiple store, so this is kind of you know uh, code for that particular store uh, outlet establishment establishment year in which year that particular outlet was established what is the outlet size what is the outlook look outlet location type and what is outlet type supermarket or grocery store or what sort and uh, what is item outlet sale so particular item uh, what is the um, number of sales that particular item has generated through a particular store so this is the data set um, I downloaded it again from Kaggle. Uh, so, and this is our uh, this is our target variable item outlet sale, which basically kind of we are going to predict uh, using risk regression, or uh, we are trying to identify uh, this uh, uh, like how much the item outlet sale was there for a particular data so uh, this this is all about the data now let's get started with the python code so very first thing uh, i'm just importing the regular libraries which are kind of required so i have imported numpy pandas and all this stuff which are generally required and sqln library which contains our uh, linear regression and race regression models classes basically so i'm just um, I'm just uh, reading that CSV file, uh, import, uh, converting that into a data frame named as train DF and train DF dot head. I'm checking the first five rows of my data. So this is my data, which we just discussed about. So all these details are now in data frame. And now we are going to start with the feature engineering part in feature engineering we are going to treat our data because we cannot uh, because you can see there are few columns which are kind of uh, which contains string values and they are of object type uh, and so we need to convert them somehow into numerical form and these are categorical columns and there must be some missing values as well so i'm going to do these things um, in one liner uh, to check these things in more detail, you guys can check my previous videos. I have covered all these detail in uh, all these things, all these concepts in very great details. So let us continue with that. First of all, I am treating my missing values. So my data has certain missing values. Uh, I'm treating them. So what I'm doing is that in my this data frame for this item weight column, uh, what I'm doing, uh, I'm taking the mean value 
and filling n a. So how does this will work? Uh, this command will work. Train df dot. Uh, so from this train df data frame for this column item weight, I am filling the n a values with uh, the mean value of that particular column. In place two means that means in the same data frame I am going to update this. If in place true uh, in place will be false, then I have it will create a new data frame from for me. But I am doing the same in uh, my in this same data frame. Thus next the similar way I am going to do in this uh, for my item visibility column where my uh, item visibility is zero. I'm just replacing that part with the mean of that particular column. After that, uh, for outlet establishment year, what I'm doing is that in which year that I, um, uh, that store has been established, that doesn't make a very good sense. Uh, rather than we can take uh, this data into another form, like since how many years that store is running, let's say five year, 10 years. So I am taking a 2013 as a threshold and I'm just subtracting that uh, out uh, that establishment year. So it will give me the number of uh, years uh, since the store is running. So I'm just updating that as well. And uh, outlet, outlet size I'm fill, uh, where fill NA is. Um, uh, so what I'm doing is uh, for uh, uh, where my out, uh, for outlet size, I'm just filling my NA values uh, where it is missing. I'm just uh, kind of uh, this column. I'm just deliberately updating with the small. So I'm considering that if some value is missing for that uh, that particular column outlet size, I'm assuming that it is of small size of store. After that part, now uh, we have few columns which are uh, of categorical nature. You can see that uh, item fat content, item type, item identifier and outlet size so all these columns are um, categorical columns and we need to convert those columns into numerical columns so to do this what we are trying to what we are doing we are using the pd.get dummies uh, pandas library method uh, which is get dummies what we are doing i am first in this line what i am doing from my train df data frame I'm selecting the columns whose data type is of object. That means this line of code, this much code will give me the name of the columns whose data type is object. So, and I am passing that value into a list. So it will create a list for me. So this is, and those uh, column name will come into this, my list. After that, what I'm doing is, Using this pd.getDummies method, what I'm doing uh, from this data frame, those columns, I'm just getting dummy values. So what it will do, dummies will create uh, uh, some, let's say a column has three type of values, small, medium and big. So what it will do, it will convert that column into three columns um, with small, medium and uh, large. So wherever small is, uh, wherever the small value was there in my uh, like old column, so it will take as one for others, it will take as zero. Again, to check all these things, these are basic things I have covered already in my previous videos. To check these things in great detail, please uh, check my previous videos. Uh, so all uh, in nutshell, I'm, what I'm just uh, doing here is I'm just converting those categorical column into numerical columns. So after once I have converted them, what I'm doing, I'm just dropping my previous columns, which are now converted into numerical columns. Uh, so I do not need those categorical columns. So I am dropping those from my data frame. After dropping that, now my data frame has that only numerical columns, but newly created numerical columns are still to be appended, still to be concatenated. So that part I am doing here 
inside train df i am just appending the dummies and dummies are the values that uh, um, which i created in my previous line so after concatenating netting uh, now this is my x so i am since item outlet sale is my you know um, target variable so i am dropping it from x variable uh, my feature vector so i am dropping it uh, in place uh, in place to means that means uh, do not create a new data frame just update the same one so it has uh, dropped it and after that now i can see that i have this much of rows and this much of columns 1604 after that um, i am train uh, splitting my data set into train and test uh, so this is a standard procedure i'm just passing my x and the feature vector this is my target variable and random state is a um, is an attribute for which we can give any number it doesn't make any difference so and it will uh, split my data into train and test split after that i am creating a linear regression model a linear regression and for with using linear regression dot fit i am training my model over the data set now uh, the training part has been completed uh, so now if i use this uh, for predicting after using this now i want to check that how my model is performing now for this part i am using r2 square r2 score uh, which is basically a kind of you know we pass the y predicted value and y actual value then we compare and then we calculate the score how it is um, how our model is performing this is a very in actual this is a very small value and it is in negative so uh, this is something uh, this is the something uh, which i wanted to show you that in some cases linear regression doesn't uh, fit uh, so in those cases um, what happens is that uh, might be due to over overfitting our model do not uh, perform well in uh, during the testing and uh, it may perform somewhat good during the training so this is what is happening and um, to solve this we are, what we are doing we are using ridge regression so to um, use reg ridge regression it is very simple and um, code wise it is very simple and how it actually works uh, behind the uh, behind this code that part i have covered in my previous video so here i am creating an object of ridge and passing the alpha value where in our previous uh, uh, video we have used that thing as lambda so this this is the lambda uh, or you can say alpha these are uh, kind of you know just uh, denomination things how we denominate few things and after creating the res mode uh, the object of this class uh, and then we uh, fit res dot fit that means we are training our model res res regression model and then we are going to predict it so after creating it um, if i check the accuracy for my res regression it comes out 0.474 that means 47% of uh, uh, predictions are uh accurate whereas in in linear regression it was a uh, a negative value so now the questions come uh, how come it is possible that our linear regression uh, model prediction are in negative values or or any any model values are negative values so worst it i mean if we think in terms of lemon man what the worst thing what it can be like um there are like 100 sample and we gives our, we give those 100 sample to our model so the worst thing could be like it didn't predict any so that means that brings that our model accuracy should be um zero the worst thing 
but that's not the case this is not the true fact behind and that this is not the true math behind it and uh, the reason how it works is like uh, let me show it to you so whenever r square value is negative what happens is that that means the um, our model selected do not follow the trend of data for example uh, in this like uh, in this figure uh, these are dots and uh, but our model line has predicted something like this which is coming from y towards x and in downwards direction uh, so that means what it means that is it is nowhere uh, kind of symbolizing or kind of uh, going towards uh, the uh, data trend so that's why it is not uh, predicting a very correct thing if it would have been zero then in that case it would have been the um then in that case it would have been uh, parallel to x so that means that case would have been uh, this one which this line shows which is parallel to x the horizontal line in this case it would have been zero or product prediction would have been zero uh, but our data is going this way and our model is predicting this way so that that means our model is uh not doing very good and that's the only reason uh the accuracy of our model has come into negative values so that's the uh, actual logic behind it so now you guys uh, can understand that how regression is very important and um, you can see that for linear regression it was negative value and for raise regression it is around uh, 47% although this is not a very good accuracy but uh, the idea here is not to concentrate on the accuracy part the idea here is to concentrate on the raise regression and um, in which cases we can use raise raise regression so that's the idea here uh, so for this video that's all for now and uh, thanks for watching this video um till then uh, so see you in next video till then take care bye bye